We are joined now by CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman and CBS News chief election and campaign correspondent Robert Costa. Good morning to you both. Ricky, let's start with you. How strong is this case now that we see the actual case? Done with the speculation. How strong is the case? If you look not at the indictment itself, which is boilerplate, but when you look at the statement of facts, the statement of facts go into great detail. The question is, which crime do the falsified business records connect to? Is it a tax crime? Mm. Is it a federal uh, election violation? Or is it a state election violation? Or is it three of the above? And I think it would be better for everyone if we knew exactly what statute. If you look at the federal indictment of Michael Cohen mm -hmm. and you look at each charge, it tells you, it gives you the number of the charge so you can go look it up. So that's what's missing here. Doesn't mean it's not strong. I would just like to know which statute. And the reason you'd like to know which statute is it's that statute that elevates it from a misdemeanor to a felony. Is that Precisely. It? Got it. Would you rather be defending or uh, prosecuting this case? Well, I always thought that being a public prosecutor, which I was for a number of years, was the greatest job I have ever had because you could do justice, because you had discretion in what cases you brought and what cases you didn't bring, and in sentencing recommendations. But as a scrapper, I think that that part of me <laughs> would love to go forward and do the motions in this case for the defense. But that's very divorced from the person that I am. That's the lawyer that I am. Bob, let's talk about where this goes, because former President Trump is also a presidential candidate. The next hearing is December 4th, which we get into that tricky timeline of, you know, he's a defendant in this case, but he also is running a campaign. At what point does he have to take his eye off the ball, if he will ever, off the legal case mm. and look ahead to what voters want to hear about, the issues that they care about, or does this define his campaign? It's such an important question. And speaking of being a scrapper, so many of former President Trump's rivals in the Republican Party mm -hmm. believe he is a scrapper politically. And though they may want to win the nomination themselves, many of them remain reluctant to get into the arena with someone who is now so combative, both legally and politically. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has not yet announced those who have been recruited, like Virginia Governor's Glenn Youngkin, have resisted getting into the race. There's a belief now that Trump has consolidated a lot of his support in the Republican Party, but they do not believe inside his own inner circle that he's going to change his tune anytime in the coming months, that it's, instead it's going to be his grievances, his anger that really fuel him toward that Republican nomination versus any particular policy position. You use the word combative, and, and that can describe his tone last night in his speech. Is there any legal risk, Ricky, I'll ask you, um, of him talking um, as he leads up to maybe a campaign run? Well, I'm sure as his lawyer, I would like him to be quiet. And I would think that at least some of his lawyers would like him to just stop, especially with threatening remarks. It can never really serve you. But what the lawyer has to think about is that any statement you make, extrajudicial statement, any statement out of court that you make or you write or you post, could be introduced in evidence in a court of law if okay. it looks like an admission. So would I like him to just stop? Of course, as a lawyer. But he is a political candidate, which throws it right back to Bob. That's not his style. And not his style. It's also not his goal. Mm. Yeah. And, and when you think, too, that um, he's already fundraising off of this, we saw that fake mugshot with the T-shirts, Bob. You know, he's using this as his political fire you know, how much more can we expect that that is the campaign? A, a lot on what's happening in New York. They're going to use that New York case as a political target. But when you talk to Trump's confidants and his closest advisors, they are on edge about what's happening, as Scott detailed, in the other yes. investigations, especially in the federal grand jury investigations being led by the special counsel. He is being in investigated right now for whether he obstructed the return of those classified records to the federal government. That's the point of alarm among some Trump associates at this moment. Before we move on, let me say thank you for working around the clock. Yes. Great coverage yesterday. Incredible. And waking up early with us. You get up early every morning. No, yeah. but you guys did a but great job. You carried job it all afternoon and night. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Ricky and Bob, thank you We're so much.